baseball to me is a, is a game where you know you you learn how to play it. And it takes 11 people to, to do it, and uh, when you put all the pieces together, you got the guards over here and the linemen over there and the backs over here and this guy over there and somebody upstairs, and whatever. And when you get on that field, it all goes at once. And it's the same theory for bunker business. There's 19 different steps to making a bunker job perfect, in my opinion. And so we teach each one of those steps. And from the guy driving the boat, the guy throwing the line, to the guy that's with the chief engineer, to the guy that's handling the papers, to the guy that pumps the barge, to the guy that makes sure you know we don't have any pollution problems and make sure the barge maintenance is perfect, the engines are running. Because when you get to a ship, there is no time to be messing around. If you do a cruise ship, that ship hits the dock at 7.30 and he is leaving at 4 and he's got 5,000 people that are going to be mad if he doesn't leave. So we do all those things and so when you get the 11 guys, which we only carry five on each boat, two captains, two tankmen and a deckhand, but when they come up and they push that clutch in and that oil starts moving to that ship, it's all coming together just like the football deal and it's all based on training and repetition and repetition and repetition. That's how we make it work. Now getting back to the safety deal. 400 feet of oil spill boom on every barge. If a ship runs its tanks over or we have a problem and you can put that boom in the water instantly and it takes seven and a half minutes for us to deploy the whole thing, get the tug to run the boom around the barge. So it captures it all. And so it's all about training and how to do it. And you have to have your people aware all the time. And the captains have to know how to drive these tugs. I mean, they're pushing, you know, a football field down the doggone ship channel. You know, the barge is 300 feet long. So you got to know what you're doing. What we have is this, is this huge amount of training on how to tell people just to get along with people. Just be nice. What did I say? Remember until, we read that before? Be nice, be nice, be nice, be nice. Those were the three things we talked about, right? And these guys are bringing the ships up. And who pays us? The ships. So we want them to come in and we want to get along with everybody. It's a, it's a conglomeration of just just getting with people, it takes us three weeks to see everybody in our company. I handle every safety meeting myself. I stand up there in front of them. But as far as talking to people and training them and telling them what's real and do the right thing, if you just do the right thing, it's going to work. Buffalo Marine Service is a 75-year-old company that started out in towing, towing petroleum barges around this area, and then it uh, grew they got into the tank ship business, the dredging business, and, and then it uh, downsized and started over again as a towing company. Uh, the present owner, Pat Studdert, was uh, brought into the company by his father, Tom, about 1976, and uh, Pat has worked here ever since then and is now the sole owner of uh, Buffalo Marine Service. Early on in uh, Buffalo Marine's history, it was determined that spill uh, response was very, very important because we carry about 85 to 90 percent of our products oil. So we started a program uh, way back in the 80s to be conscious of preventing spills. If there is such a, uh, an occurrence, then we uh, have training programs to contain and to recover whatever we might spill. Buffalo's barge overfill in Texas City not too long ago, whereby uh, we exercised our contingency plan to the nth degree. We were loading at a major oil company's dock. Uh, because of uh, momentary inattention, the tank overfilled on the barge and into the water. Immediately, the captain realized that he had to exercise our contingency plan, and he notified uh, the dock to shut down the filling, the tank run on board, also notified the dock, uh, and then our spill plan was put into effect by the vessel personnel. Uh, they put out the containment boom, which we carry on every one of our barges. We have a 400-foot hard containment boom, and uh, they were able to contain probably 60 to 70 percent of that oil that was in the water. Because of our training, I think that Buffalo Marine uh, stood up really well in that incident. And as a result, it didn't go on for a long period of time. Uh, we were able to benefit of a couple of oil spill response contractors. The cleanup became very effective very quickly. 
and the Coast Guard and the Texas General Land Office made some very glowing remarks which makes Buffalo Marines training really worthwhile to us. Commander Jim Robertson, Commanding Officer of Marine Safety Unit, Texas City. I was the Federal On-Scene Coordinator for the response uh, to the Per 33 spill. A member of the Unified Command with the State of Texas as well as oh. Buffalo Marine. It's been a textbook response. Uh, all our partners stood up rapidly. Uh, the response was timely, very appropriate. It's better to over-respond. In this case, we were able to corral the oil, get the environment protected with minimal impact. In fact, we have now shifted from a response mode to a management mode. We've got all the boom removed, oil debris is cleaned up. Texas City is, is open for business now. Uh, my name is Richard Arnhart. I'm with the Texas General Land Office Oil Spill Prevention and Response Program. I'm the state on-scene coordinator for this oil spill event. Bulk of the oil was contained well as per the very contingency plan. So it's pretty much textbook operation. We're dealing with an oil that is not as residual as some of the bunker fuels that we typically have. It's called a number six fuel oil. It's a little lighter into that actually. But uh, relatively easy to clean up. It's just a matter of time of getting it up and manpower and we'll be done. I think the Coast Guard, Texas General Land Office uh, came to realize that there was uh, good performance in the containment and cleanup of that spill incident at Texas City. Was it unfortunate? Yes. Do we respond to the cleanup? Absolutely. It went real good down there. Along with the safety efforts, you got perfect equipment, people that are trained, people know how to get along with people because when you go on a ship, it's just like going up to the front porch of somebody's house and knocking on the door and trying to sell a vacuum cleaner. Sometimes they're not happy with you anyway. But you have to be able to deal with those personalities. My dad had three things other that he talked about and I'm going to tell you about. Three theories, and they always work, and this is what we do. And I'll talk to our guys about it. One monkey don't stop, no show. So that means if old Pat dies tomorrow, Timmy will take over or somebody will, and everybody going to get on Southwest Freeway and go to work. So we're not better than anybody else. Number two, no pockets in a shroud. A shroud is what they used to bury people in, you know, like a gown and it didn't have any pockets in it, so you can't take the money with you. The third thing was, and it's really interesting, and I'll stop on this, is there was an old movie made back in the 1930s called How Green Was My Valley. And it was a movie about a little boy and his brothers and his mother and his family in a Welch mining town, and everybody that affected his life as he grew up as a little kid, but it's called How Green Was My Valley. It was about where he was in life. And my valley is greener because of the people that I've met in this industry. My valley is greener because of football coaching, people in the industry, our Lord, where we live, what happens every day, knowing you, meeting someone in the Coast Guard, meeting someone at the port, meeting someone in a major oil company, meeting somebody at a refinery, meeting the dockman down at Houston Fuel Hall, meeting the guy that wells the barge at the shipyard. And so, you know, and, and our own kids and our grandchildren and whatever. So your valley becomes greener and greener based on who you bring into your life. So, you know, one mic on stop, no show, no pockets in a shroud, and that green was my valley, and that's what we live by. And it's real simple. And football.